Uh, Dr. Zhang again, I am a, a hospitalist internal medicine and prior researcher. Uh, my job also involves treating uh, admitted COVID patients. Um, today, I'll try to talk about uh, long COVID symptoms and analyze how that happened and how to try to treat it. Um, we know from the prior research that COVID is very unique in that uh, it has a very high viral load in the reinfected patients. And also it can go everywhere in the body involving every body systems. As a result, uh, the long-term COVID symptom can involve all organ systems and a patient can present with all kinds of symptoms. Um, how this happened. And let's look at the time course of the viral infection. Um, so you are after the infection and in virus load reached a peak in about three weeks. And by week four, the body produced antibodies. At that time, uh, the viral load decreased almost to zero. Uh, by that time, when antibody uh, peaked, uh, if the people has a normal immune system, we are not expecting any live virus. So every virus has been neutralized by antibody. So we are talking about a immune complex. And how this happened with the long-term COVID symptoms, uh, there is some a study came out and we can look at it, you know, who can happen and what kind of people develop long-term symptoms. That can tell us, you know, what's the mechanism underlying that. Um, so study has shown that uh, if you have activated interleukin-6 or C-reactive protein or fibrinogen, you have a high, much higher um, possibility of developing long COVID symptoms. So what all this index tells us, it looks like our immune system is causing the problems. And um, as for how this happened, uh, there's few theories about it, and uh, including you know, viral replication and uh, immune response to the virus and autoimmune response, or even our gut flora may play a role. But to look at the most apparent um, problem in this whole scenario, and it looks like we are talking about immune complex. So as we said that you know, every virus um, by four or five weeks has already combined with antibody. There's no alive virus anymore. Uh, let's recatch what we have said already. So when the people invest in, uh, infected with virus, we have a very large virus load. There's no alive virus by week four. So immune complex may be the problem. If you remember from biology class, when we're talking about uh, immune complex disease, um, we're talking about type three hypersensitive immune response, such as a serum uh, sickness. But in this scenario, it's very different. First, the immune complex is very large and uh, they are not soluble. They are not present in the bloodstream mostly they are in the tissue organs. But the consequences are quite different, are quite the same. They cause chronic inflammation. Uh, let's look at how that happens by looking at how they, uh, they are cleared by the body. And uh, they can be cleared up of, by phagocytes. You know, they are swallowed by uh, the cells and digested and eliminated. Uh, these cells include the macrophage in the bloodstreams microglia cell in the central nervous system and a kufa cell in the liver. Um, but a lot of times we have too much virus and too much uh, immune complex. So this cannot be cleared e efficiently by the macrophages. So as a result, uh, their deposition into the tissue organ will cause activation of cytokines and uh, which um, causing chronic inflammation 
and organ dysfunction. Um, this can be quite you know, long-term and serious. So we would hope that uh, you know, we can transiently uh, suppress uh, this immune response and let the body take time to clear the immune complex by macrophages. The treatment option, um, I would think we can do some um, corticosteroids or um, some medicine in a class of medicine called immunomodulators. Um, as for who should be treated, um, the people had a COVID infection after a month or two, if they have persistent inflammation markers such as interleukin-6 and uh, um, C-reactive protein or fibrinogen. And if this level is still elevated, might consider a treatment. And uh, but first, we probably need a clinical trial uh, to confirm which one is more effective. And uh, we can use lower dose corticosteroids uh, versus uh, immunomodulators such as hydro uh, hydro hydroxychloroquine uh, versus the methotrexate. What about the people who had COVID but did not present long COVID symptoms? Um, based on what we can understand, they should also have some degree of a chronic inflammation. Um, so there is a guideline by you know, American Heart Association and uh, chronic inflammation, which is measured by a high sensitive CRP, actually is an independent risk factor for uh, heart disease and stroke. We are talking about the very raw level of CRP, not um, the inflammation talked about uh, with uh, COVID. And uh, I'll assume that the, the CRP elevation in the infected people with COVID would be much higher than measured by high sensitivity CRP. Um, this presents uh, an opportunity for the, some herbal product, uh, such as a Chinese herbal product that could be able to modulate the immune system and uh, may be able to suppress um, the immune response to the uh, immune complex. Uh, thanks for the listening. And uh, at the next uh, topic, I would try to talk about the herbal medicine and uh, how to make it more effective.